so hello in today video we are going to learn about type c concept and the type c power delivery system flow charts so suppose the newer laptops coming with the type c port that is the power is a bidirectional and if such a laptops are dead that means the laptop will start powering on then what to do what are the test point how to test the signal which are the point we have to see that everything we are to going to see step by step in the flow chart so i am going to explain you the flow chart if the laptop type c laptop is not powering on which are the test point we have to check that everything i am going to show you in this video so let's start so now with the help of flow charts we are going to understand how to repair uh, type c dead laptops the new generation laptops so first thing what we have to do we have to check uh, first 20 volt on the current meter there is a current meter available uh, for uh, testing the voltage and the current which we can connect to the adapter okay so this uh, here we have to check uh, the 20 volt uh, if the 20 volt is okay then we have to go down but if the voltage is stuck here is there is a problem either type c chip is bad or bug bus converter bad then the voltage will be stuck and it will remain the 5 volt so if it is a 5 volt then we have to go right and we have to check uh, if the 20 volt is not coming and the V bus voltage stuck at 5 volt, then the first thing we have to check that is type C controller supplies. That is the supplies for the type C controller that is a 5 volt. And there are number of LDO voltage that is a linear voltage coming out from the type C controller like 3.3 uh, volt come out for the type C bias then 1.8 and some laptops 1.2 also so that we have to check. LDO voltage and we have to check whether any corrosion or short circuit on the type C controller chip because each port have the separate separate type C controller chip so we have to check all the type C controllers uh, inputs and output we have to check the resistance whether any short circuit are there or not if there is a no short circuit the CC line and the V bus is a proper if the type C controller chip is okay then uh, bug bus converter chip bug bus controller the chip or the circuit which increase or decrease the voltage because in the type c controller the power is a bi-directional that means power goes in and goes out also bi-directional so uh, we have to check uh, this uh, bug boost converter chips the next thing is if uh, the 20 volt is coming uh, on the v bus then the next thing we have to check the bug boost converter output the bug boost converter output that is a system voltage that is somewhere around 12 to 13 volts depend model to model this system voltage is a basically is given to the different 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 bug converter there are a number of bug converter like 3.3 volt bug converter then the 5 volt then the for the ram bug converter then the pch bug converter then the cpu and the cpu core voltages pch voltage and the cpu is a combined because it's called the soc so this voltage is called the system voltage so the input voltage goes that is a 20 volt and this buck bus converter generate output voltage that is somewhere around 12 to 13 voltage again it's depend model to model and same voltage for the battery also so here we have to check the output voltage now if this voltage is not coming then we have to go why this uh, system voltage that is the buck bus converter output voltage is not coming so there is a bug boost controller chip so first thing we have to check the dc in for the chips that is number one then there is a signal is called the ac in, that means the adapter current in there we have to check a three volt then if there is a reset signal then that same signal again we have to check if this input criteria is okay then the next signal we have to check that is output signal that is we have to check origin signal origin is a five volt and then we have to check ac okay signal which is sending to the sio that is a 3 volt so again we have to check uh, there is sm bus is called the i2c bus the i2c is a communication between the bug boost converter chip and uh, sio so that signal we have to check with the help of oscilloscope now if uh, this uh, signal is not proper if the output is one of the output is missing then the bug boost converter chip is bad or there are four MOSFET, two MOSFET on the left side, two MOSFET on the right side and there between there is one coil. So either left side MOSFET are open or the right side MOSFETs may be open. So we straight, we can straight away replace those MOSFET and we can recheck. Okay. So in this way, 
we can check this bug boost converter. Now, if my bug boost converter output voltage is coming, that means my system voltage is coming, then the next thing we have to check that is 3 volt. Now, this 3 volt is going to the SIO. Okay, so here we have to check uh, this 3 volt on the V standby pin of the SIO. And if it is not coming this 3 volt, then we have to move to a 3.3 volt section. There is a single chip 3.3 volt buck converter which generate a linear voltage called LDO voltage called the V3VL voltage output from that chips. Once you get the enable, there are two enable for this 3.3 volt buck converter, one enable for the linear supply and another enable for the buck converter output. So we have to check first enable which create linear voltage that is called a 3VL voltage and this 3VL voltage is going to the SIO. Now, if this 3 VL voltage is not coming out, that means uh, the 3.3 chip is bad. So, we have to replace this 3.3 volt buck converter. The next thing is if the 3.3 volt is coming, then the next thing is we have to check that NBS on called the power button or power switch. See, there are two power button. One is called the input power button and another is called the output power button. Input power button is called NBS on or the power switch okay or the on off switch and there we will see a uh, 3 volt and when we press that power button is goes to 0 and we release that button it goes back to 3 that means the 303 bounds will be created on the NBS on pin. So, this signal we have to check on the SIO. Now, if this coming then the next signal that we have to check that is RSM, RST and the PM power button. PM power button means the post power button. It's called sometimes it's in some diagram it's mentioned PNBSW on signal. So, there also 303 pulse will be generated PM power button and the RSMRST of course is shift to the from 0 to 3 volt. So, that we have to check. Now, if the RSMRST remains 0 volt only, it's not responding after pressing the power button, then we have to go right and we have to see why the RSMRST is not coming. So the first thing we have to check EC reset that is a 3 volt. Then the next thing we have to check AC in signal that is a 3 volt and the next we have to check lead sensor switch that is also 3 volt. So the, all the signals are 3, 3, 3. We have to check on the SIO and still RSMRST is not coming if these 3, 3 volts are coming on the EC reset AC in signal lead switch but still it is not shifting RSMRST to the 3 volt then the next thing we have to flash the EC bias, okay. So, the EC bias is inbuilt into the SIO. So, we have to flash the SIO with the help of SIO programmer and we have to recheck. But if the problem is not solved after flashing the EC bias, then we have to replace SIO. The SIO is bad. So, in this way, we can conclude how the SIO is bad. So, we have to check all the signal one after another if the RSMRST is not coming. Now, the next question is if the RSMRST is coming but still laptop is not powering on, then the next signal we have to check that is SLPS3 and SLPS4. Sometimes the alternate name is SUSB and SUSC. So now if these two signals are not coming, this two signal generated by the CPU, okay, and this two signal we can check on the SIO that is a 3, 3 volt. And if it is a remain 0 volt, that means my CPU is not responding. Now why my CPU is not responding? So, what we have to do? We have to check first signal that is VCC DSW. So, the VCC DSW is a power to the CPU that we have to check. This voltage is coming from the 3.3 volt buck converter and if this 3.3 volt is not coming, then we have to see why this buck converter is not working, okay? So, we have to replace that chips or the MOSFET or the enable signal. Now, if the 3.3 volt is coming, that means VCC DS, DSW signal is uh, voltage is coming on the CPU. Then the next thing we have to check the RTC section, that is we have to check RTC VCC, RTC reset and RTC clock. These are the entire RTC circuit, 3.3 volt. Then the RTC reset also 3 volt and RTC clock, that is 32.7 kilo frequency we have to check. And if one of the signal is missing, then we have to check why that signal is missing, maybe crystal is bad or the RTC reset is not generated or RTC VCC is not coming, okay. So, in this way, we have to check this RTC section. Now, the next thing is if the RTC is coming properly, but still SLP 
S3 and SLP S4 is not generating, then the next signal we have to check that is DPWROK. DPWROK is a signal which is a wake up signal generated most of the SIO and given to the CPU that is called a deep sleep power okay signal. This generate by the SIO given to the CPU that is a 3 volt this signal we have to check. And if this signal is not coming then we have to see why SIO is not generate DPWROK signal. The next thing we have to check if the DPWROK coming but still laptop is not generating SLPS3 and SLPS4 signal then we have to heat the motherboard. So heating the motherboard is a, a different different procedure why we need to heat the motherboard because sometimes is a moisture is created between the two legs because the, the CPU balls are so small so close to each other SIO legs are so small and so close to each other so sometimes the moisture is created in between the two pins and this ball get dry solder so we have to heat the motherboard you can heat the motherboard either OTG one or you can heat the motherboard either a hot gun or you can heat the motherboard either a BGA machine whichever is a convenient to you but if the after heating the motherboard if the problem not solved then the next thing we have to see that CPU is bad because the CPU is not generate SLP3 SLP4 signal so in this way we have to check all the signal in some laptop uh, there is a sections in a bias is called EC region is there in the bias so some sometimes the, the main bias the EC region is there so the main bias is corrupt due to that also laptop is not turned on and in some laptop there is a section is called a uh, bias region there is a one section is called the TX region if the TX region is corrupt then also laptop is not turned on so this way we have to check uh, if the SLP3 SLP S4 signal not generate the next thing is if my SLP3 SLP4 signal is coming but still a uh, laptop not uh, turning fully on then the next signal we, we have to check that is sys on susp on and vr on so, uh, this flowchart is uh, basically for the compel and the quanta laptop so in compel and quanta laptop this uh, three signals are generated called as sys on susp and vr on so all three signals should be convert uh, 3 3 volt after pressing the power button but if it is not generating the 3 3 volt after pressing the power button uh, if the SLP S3 and SLP S4 also coming then the probably the SIO is bad so we have to replace the SIO so friend in this way uh, we have to follow this uh, flow chart for repair a dead type C laptop so one after another you have to see all the signal and detect the problem in a new generation type c laptops so this is a procedure to diagnose dead laptop type c laptops so the newer generation laptop with the type c port so you simply have to follow this flow chart if the laptop is not turning on you have to see all the signals step by steps and you will can able to detect the problem you can able to detect particular chips or particular component is bad with the help of this flow chart and if you want such a more flowcharts, different different problems like power on but not display, dead, short circuit, dim display, white display, bias editing. If if everything you want uh, want to know about, if and if you are doing work in a laptop repairs, even Apple's or in Windows, you can use these books. These books are very useful. Uh, given a different different flowcharts and different different solutions all the every solutions are there in the books including the bias editing battery not charging dim display white display dead power on but no display everything is there and if you are working on a apple laptop they can this book for you this is dedicated to the apple laptops including t2 chips and m1 power sequence also and with the help of this book you can diagnose the different different problem in the apple laptops motherboard so you can use this both the books and become an expert repair engineers okay so thank you very much for watching this video have a nice day